For the past couple of weeks, I've been focused on discussing a pattern that we find in the scriptures of a person who is called of God. They feel inadequate to the task. They say they're slow of speech. I can't speak to these people. And God says, who made your mouth? God, being the master language user, can tutor us and train us if we choose to walk with him. Um, and, and this is the pattern. Last week I talked about Enoch and the way that he chose to walk with God and the great power that he gained in language by following God, that he learned to speak God's words, eternal words, in a way that God speaks them so that he could um, be develop, he developed a deep relationship with the earth and he was a great influence on both the earth and on the people around him. And so all of this because he chose to trust in God and to allow God to tutor his tongue. Now there is another experience in the scriptures of a, of a person who took the opposite path. He did not choose to follow God, um, but he was tutored by someone else. Now in Alma chapter 30, Mormon relates the experience uh, that took place in the land, I th think it was of Zarahemla, where Korahor comes among the people um, and he is, is trying to teach them that there will be no Christ, there can be no God, the things that these people are teaching you, the things that your prophets have taught you, they're just foolish traditions. Everything that you know is wrong, there will be no God. Now when, when Korahor finally comes before Alma, Alma, well, uh, uh, Alma convinces him, well not, doesn't convince him, but but he interacts with him, communicates with him, and Korahor finally says, if you'll show unto me a sign, I will believe in God. So Alma says, all right, if it be God's will, this is what's going to happen. And so Korahor was struck dumb. He couldn't speak anymore. And we come up to this point in the story, and he, he confesses why he had taught the people, why he had come amongst them and tried to convince them that there would be no Christ. Now in verse 53 in Alma chapter 30, he says, But behold, the devil hath deceived me, for he appeared unto me in the form of an angel. Now the, uh, the master deceiver, is, uh, is he, he does this. He appears to people in the form of an angel of light and tries to convince them with his manipulative words that they should follow him. And here's what he says, what the devil said to Korahor. He said unto me, Go and reclaim this people, for they have all gone astray after an unknown God. And Korahor continues, There, And he said unto me, There is no God. Yea, and he taught me that which I should say, and I have taught his words. And I taught them because they were pleasing unto the carnal mind, and I taught them even till I had much success, insomuch that I verily believed that they were true. And for this cause I withstood the truth, even till I have brought this great curse upon me. So because the the devil appeared unto him in the form of an angel, as an angel of light, he said, I will tutor your tongue. Now Korahor was convinced by this. He didn't have apparently the discernment to allow him to understand that this wasn't the right angel he should be listening to. And so he, he allows Lucifer to teach him. He taught me, Korahor says, that which I should say, and I have taught his words. So Lucifer tutored Korahor's tongue. And what happens eventually? Well, Korahor loses the ability to speak. He loses the ability to make language with his mouth, with his tongue. And instead, he can, he can just write. Now, there's great power in writing. But the important thing to keep in mind in this instance is that is the source of the tutoring that Korahor received. And what happens? He gets kicked out of the land, goes from house to house begging for food, finally goes over among the Zoramites, continues begging and begging. Now the Zoramites, they weren't very good people. So as Korahor goes forth amongst them, we see in verse 59, Behold, he was run upon and trodden down, even until he was dead. And now Mormon makes this observation. And thus we see the end of him who perverteth the ways of the Lord. And thus we see that the devil will not support his children at the last day, but doth speedily drag them down to hell. So in Enoch's instance, God supported him. He lifted him up. He allowed him to become a great influence among the people, that he influenced not only the people, but also the land, also the earth. Now in Korahor's instance, he allowed his tongue to be tutored by Lucifer. And in the end, he was trodden down, even that he was speedily dragged down to hell, 
by Lucifer. He had no real influence beyond that small influence which he had in this land, which was immediately counteracted by a proclamation that was sent forth by Alma, telling them everything that had happened to Korihor. So that the people were convinced that, oops, we maybe shouldn't have believed him. We're going to come back and we're going to believe the things that our prophets have taught us. So that's just an alternate pattern. This is, this is a counterpoint to the pattern I've been discussing the past couple of weeks. An important one to keep in mind, that we should allow our discernment to help, we can allow our discernment to help us understand and to be tutored by God's tongue to understand the right kinds of language we should be sharing with others. So keep that in mind. Uh, uh, develop your powers of discernment. Allow the Spirit to teach you, to tutor your tongue, and we can become a great influence on those around us with our words.